Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Stephen. And this is F1 Fanatics. Welcome back to another F1 Fantasy Weekly where we give you your uh, weekly dosage of all the F1 fantasy uh, knowledge and information that you could possibly want because we are F1 Fantasy experts. F1 knowledge. <laughs> F1 knowledge. Yeah. yeah, we're strong on that. We're strong. <laughs> on F1 Fantasy knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> we never got a prediction wrong on this channel. Nope, never. Roll the tape. <laughs> and obviously <laughs> And obviously from the start. Uh yes, F1 experts, uh, fantasy experts we are not, but we quite enjoy the game and we give our views and opinions on uh what we quite enjoy and adds a little bit of spice to each race weekend uh for us and the people completing our leagues and hopefully for you guys out there playing the game as well so if you don't know what f1 fantasy is a quick rundown of the game is you have a hundred million uh dollar budget to select five drivers and one constructor and those will then combine with their points over the course of the weekend to compete against other players or either they be your friends or against kind of people globally and you see whether you can come out on top and if you've been playing from the start then obviously you had a chance to kind of win Grand Prix tickets at the end of the season if you manage to come on top so there which should be pretty awesome to do. Yeah. But that is basically what F1 Fantasy is. Obviously points are scored over race and qualifying as well i should say that but we are previewing today the brazilian grand prix because that is the next race up yeah so what we'll be doing in the rest of the video is we will be giving our top picks of who to go um our bottom picks well our turbo picks yeah who to avoid this week and then what we're doing with our teams before rounding off with our kimmy moment of the week yeah, of course. Can't forget about Kimmy. Can't forget about Kimmy. Great moment of the week. Yeah. Right. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not uh, sure. Oh, I have the yeah, Kimmy moment of the week. I always look forward to it, you know? Yeah, you see, so I, I, I have. to this week? Well, you'll find out at the end oh. of the episode. Oh. There you go. Drama with Kimmy. But anyway, top picks for Brazil and for me... Uh, in terms of the top teams, I cannot see past Mercedes, and we had been saying Ferrari, but I would steer clear of Ferrari, and I would back Red Bull. I mean, Albon, you're back in any way because he's just the best turbo guy, but I would also back Max Verstappen. Yes, and obviously Albon's just secured his Red Bull seat. Lots of confidence. He's got nine to lose now. In, in theory, so you may just go for it. Could be a strong performance from that one. Red Bull, yeah. Yeah, I I agree with that. Ferrari obviously have a grid penalty coming their way with Charles Leclerc, so you'd think that would hurt their race position. At the end of the day, it's all about race position with the constructors, and yeah, stay clear. Yeah, and, and Vettel, I just, in terms of value for money, I think he's too much of a risk for how Ferrari have been in terms of a points return. Yeah. If it was Leclerc, but with Leclerc with that grid penalty, uh, we were discussing this pre-camera, he could still be a good pick because he could still qualify um, like could, on pole. in theory, qualify on pole, go back to 10th, and then go on and win the race somehow. Um, <laughs> but even if he gets up to something like fourth, he then gets all then those overtaking points. points. But you get minus points because in te technically he qualifies pole. No. Well, I thought that's how. Because if he, yes, if they take in the qualifying, they don't take oh, into account penalties. Very true. So it'd be even if he gets up to third, he still gets minus the points, minus points for losing position. Two yeah. places. Yeah. So. Easy. Charles Charles Leclerc is a big risk this Dangerous week. It's a, it's a much safer bet to go Verstappen. Obviously, Verstappen looks set to win the Brazilian Grand Prix last year, and then uh, had that uh, uh, famous incident. Uh, famous kind of builds it up. That incident that he had with Esteban Ocon, um, where obviously Ocon was a back marker and Verstappen was overtaking him, and Ocon didn't get out of the way, fought for position, they collided. 
Uh, Verstappen span, and then I think he finished second or third in the race after that, and yeah. Hamilton went on to win. Win it comfortably. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think Verstappen would definitely be very hungry. And you've got to take into account he's fighting for third place in the drivers. Exactly, and this is a really big opportunity with Leclerc with those grid penalties to capitalise on that. Yeah, so he's currently 14 points behind Leclerc. Yeah, so... Uh, in terms of drivers, they don't get any monetary gain, or they might gain some new sponsors from it. But you know, it's it's just the pride of finishing third in a championship, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So they'll want that. Um, those are the top drivers and the top teams. I mean, I, I think we could probably uh, just repeat what we do in other episode. Top picks from other teams are probably going to be Daniel Ricciardo, Carlos Sainz, and. Sergio Perez. And what we call the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity. They're just the best drivers in their teams and they're all doing... And value for money, they're great. Although Norris did beat signs in the US. Norris had a really good yeah. US Grand Prix. Got 21 points or something. And I think, yeah, I think he's out... No, he hasn't outscored him for the last couple of weeks. But he did outscore him last week yeah. uh, with 23 points to 12, I believe it was. Yeah. So... Again, outside pick is probably Lando Norris. Lando Norris, yeah. And the only one else you can really see would be Hulkenberg. Maybe having a strong performance. He's always been strong at Brazil. One of his podium chances that never quite materialised was at Brazil. And then obviously his only pole position in his first year in F1 came at Brazil in the rain. So... um, it's a track that he's comfortable around. Yeah. So he could perform well there. Yeah. So, yeah. McLaren and Renault look like the ones just below that who you want to get in your team. Um, Sainz and Ricardo are the safe bets. If you want to gamble a little bit to maybe try and make up some points on some people close around you in the leagues and tables, maybe go for a Hulkenberg or a Norris to outperform their teammate. Yeah. Well, the thing with Sainz... Is he's fighting for sixth place in the drivers' standings uh, against Albon, which is a tough ask, but you never know if he puts in a strong race. I mean, he needs to beat Albon yeah. in a race between but now and then. So, a bit of mo- motivation could get signs firing. Could could do, and McLaren have wanted to be. It, I think getting close to a Red Bull, and they've been closer, but... They always look good at the start of the race, where they're battling those top cars. And then just everything felt falls back and fades yeah. into normality. Yeah. Um, Another one, uh, what do you think about Toro Rosso? Because Gasly's fighting for that, like, sixth place, really. He's only seven points behind. Oh. Gasly is a really interesting bet. Obviously, announced uh, yesterday... Um, today of us filming it but you'll be hearing this on Wednesday so Tuesday that obviously Albon was confirmed for Red Bull for 2020 and Gaz and Kvyat were confirmed um, for 2020 at Toro Rosso and I think Gasly will be the happier out of the two yeah. Kvyat will be frustrated counting down the days because Red Bull contracts. I think yeah. it will be his sixth season starting as a Toro Rosso driver which is a long time at the junior team yeah so both will be competing for seats I feel for elsewhere in 2021 yeah um, but yeah Gasly I think is another outside bet to put in there he's been performing very good this second half of the season um, he was going well in Austin again before collision with Sergio Perez still haven't figured out what went on there but forced him to retire but he was certainly competing for the points again so certainly yeah around about the Sergio Perez slot he's a yeah he's a good one to kind of gamble on yeah well, he's only three points behind signs in the driver's standing, so... Exactly. Like you said, it could spice things up a bit. It's kind of that end of the season where drivers go, oh, I could finish there. Yeah, exactly. I need to beat that guy. That's that extra motivation. Even though the season is over, basically. Yeah, it's it's these little internal battles. Yeah. And obviously, uh, Racing Point and Toro Rosso, which is a really big battle for sixth in the Constructors. Um, and Racing Point are still 
try and touch Renault, but I, I don't think that's possible. No, they're wrong. But um, Racing Point and Toro Rosso is obviously there's one point in it. One point in it, yeah. With two races to go, so that will be massively uh, for Perez and Garza. I expect to be fighting there, and Lance yeah. Stroll and Kvyat to be behind. And if yeah. one of them can get a points finish it, it will be a massive advantage for one of the teams. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, turbo picks, I think Albon. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, he'll be full of confidence in that Red Bull seat. Nothing to lose. Um, yeah. Though Ricardo was the better turbo last time out. But that's the first time since uh, the second half yeah. season. Yeah, what you have to bear in mind, though, is if Max has a strong race and out-qualifies and out-performs... Um, Abon in a race, then he loses those bonus points which he has been getting yeah. for Max stumbling. Yeah. So that's when Ricardo and Signs could come into play Make for the beating their points. teammate. But then finishing higher in the points, you then get those points. It's exactly. all, yeah. But it's not as clear cut, yeah, because we think Verstappen's going to have a good race. So Albon probably... He hasn't got the pace to beat Verstappen outright in qualifying. And he probably doesn't have the pace to compete for him in the race. Yeah, so I, he's not going to get those bonus points unless Verstappen goes. I think Sainz or Ricardo still could be very good shouts to Turbo this week. Yeah. It's a gamble. But if it, everyone's pretty much turboing Albon now. Yeah. I'd say in the top guys um, that it might be that gamble that pays off and gets you an extra five, six points. Yeah, there's not going to be much in it. No. Because Albon's been so consistent putting the car there. Yeah, so you might you might want to go, I don't want to risk it. Yeah, for a few points. But then could this be a race where Albon doesn't finish? Maybe. Every driver runs into bad luck eventually. Exactly. Or was Albon's bad luck last race? And luckily it didn't force him to retire. Oh, uh, yes. His clash of signs. Uh, well, he got sandwiched between Leclerc and signs and then went over the sausage curbs and that's where the damage ah, yeah. went from there. But those are our turbo picks, guys. Yeah. And um, rounding off probably the uh, preview is probably a summary of what we are going to do. Uh, you may or may not be interested, but... Uh, just from guys who do play the game every race, yeah. here's, here's our thoughts on what we're going with. So, uh, Stephen, do you want to run us through your team first? Uh, well, I haven't made any changes yet, but at the moment it's Verstappen, Sainz, Albon, Turbo, Ricardo, Lewis Hamilton, and Red Bull as my team. I'm pretty happy with that because I've only got 4.7 in the bank. Um, so I can't really upgrade any of my drivers unless I went double Mercedes with... Bottas um, but yeah I've got the two of the Holy Trinity in the signs and Ricardo I'm pretty happy with my team to be honest um, the last couple of weeks I've taken minus 10 point 10 hits so this week I'm like just roll with it yeah I'm pretty happy with it yeah yeah, I'm not making any changes as it stands. I'm sticking with that team. Okay, and I have made my substitution for the week. Um, I have Valtteri Bottas, as I've pretty much had him all year. He's been a very good point scorer for me. Yeah. Um, Daniel Ricciardo, Carlos Sainz, same two of the Holy Trinity that yeah. you have. Yeah. Uh, Alex Albon as Turbo. It's it's yep. a pretty kind of good combo, I think, for that. The only way I've been differing in recent weeks uh, was Sergio Perez. But So the change I've made this week is Max Verstappen in for Charles Leclerc. And um, yeah, I think it's a pretty safe a bet. Yeah. And um, obviously I took Max Verstappen out pre-Mexico. And he only scored, I think, six points less than Leclerc. And I took a minus ten point hit to do it. And then, obviously, Verstappen outscored uh, Leclerc by seven points in Brazil, and I think he'll do there. So, overall, it's probably cost me more than um, benefiting me. So, I've returned, I've returned to Mad Max, 
and I'm I'm bringing him in. And then obviously I've stuck with it. It's been just a trusty point scorer for me. I'm the only one in our league that's kind of stuck through them through this period, and that is Mercedes as my constructors yeah. because they are just big point scorer after big point scorer. Yeah. I wish I had them, but I'm money wise I'm restricted because I've got Lewis Hamilton instead of Bottas. So that's where my expense has gone. I mean, we would literally have the same team if you did Bottas for Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, differentiation. It'd be <laughs> see, interesting to see uh, how it pays out and who uh, comes successful there. But, guys, that is your preview of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Um, let us know your thoughts. Let us know your teams uh, below. In terms of that, be interested to see there. Do you agree with our turbo picks? Uh, do you agree with our top drivers? Is there anyone else you are expecting to uh, perform well? Katie, don't say K-Mag. <laughs> say K-Mag. <laughs> and then I, I'm fully expecting Hayde to have Renault as his constructor <laughs> as he is uh, reliant on that as well. Um, but yes, so we round off this F1 Fancy Weekly as we always round off F1 Fancy Weeklies and that is with our Kimmy Moment of the Week. Oh yeah. And our Kimmy Moment of the Week this week was, uh, it was released on the F1 app or just F1 channel in general and it was, um, I think behind the scenes is what the series is called and basically um, with this kind of chop shop, uh, Kimmy had a collaboration in terms of clothing so this kind of biker shop and it's not a biker shop at all uh i'll try and find out the name but and put it up on screen for you guys but it, yeah it was just an american company and they produced some pretty cool clothing actually <laughs> i would say uh some of the classic catchphrases on there like leave me alone i know what i'm doing <laughs> You might want to shout that in London sometime. Where have I heard that from? <laughs> yeah, might want to do that. If you haven't checked out that and seen me embarrass myself, it is in the 100 subscriber video. So uh, make sure to check that out. But yeah, the clothing is pretty cool. And it is ironic that it was the shortest one of these episodes because, well, it was Kimi Raikkonen and he is a man that is precise and to the point when speaking and um, doesn't like to use many words. No. No. That was our tribute to Kimi Raikkonen right there. Uh, but yes, there you go, guys. That is the Kimi moment of the week. Hope you enjoyed it. If you had any other Kimi moment of the week, do comment below from there. But yes, that is it. That is the roundup of our F1 Fantasy Weekly. Uh, as it was only one race to cover, it's a nice yeah. and short one this week uh, before obviously reviewing the race next Wednesday. So, guys, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. We said comment below. Anything else? Comment below, Stephen? <sighs> Um, no. No. That is literally it. What <laughs> Every time. You are limited to only what we've said you can comment on. Well, that was my short Kimmy moment of the week. No. Good. I mean, it's effective. It's can to the point. Can you comment on this video with the fewest word possible, please? Yes. I want just one or two word comments. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One or two word comments. <laughs> that is the challenge. <laughs> Rate our video. Please be nice. Uh, <laughs> Katie can just go K-Mac. That's an easy one. <laughs> yeah. And guys, if you are new around here and you do enjoy listening to our content like this, please do uh, click the subscribe button. Helps us and uh, it, it means that you can uh, keep up to date with all our latest content, with all mad videos that we shove out on this channel. <laughs> and remember... Every Wednesday, you can tune in to me and Stephen going round up F1 Fancy. And obviously, with the end of season uh, coming into play, I'm sure we'll have some fun things over the winter break That's to okay. uh, analyse and go over. But yeah. guys, for now, UF1 fans, keep racing. <laughs>